today I am working from Google LA office and of course you're coming along to get a sneak peek of what it's really like working while traveling. My morning started at the hotel with an early call that I couldn't skip. Normally I like to disconnect in the morning by going on a walk before work. So before I'm heading out to work I actually have to take an early morning call. So I'm going to do that before I actually start driving because traffic in LA can be horrendous and I want to make sure that I don't miss this meeting trying to get to office in a rush. If you travel for work or take calls in different time zones, you would know what I mean. So today, instead of going on a walk, I made my coffee, opened my laptop, sat on this cute balcony and got straight into work. Would love to see if you have any additional ideas to add to what I already have put together. Bye. Yes, I'm going to enjoy the sun. I'm going to make sure I enjoy the sun. All right, now that my meeting is done, I think it's time to head out and deal with the traffic in LA, which I'm not looking forward to, but I'm really excited to actually go to the office. And I need my charger. Once I got to Seattle Venus office, I instantly remembered why I love visiting here. This office is literally so cute. Compared to Seattle, which gives more structure corporate vibes, the Venus office feels like a creative playground. The building itself looks like a piece of art. It's bright, open, and full of characters. There are so many little nooks and cozy corners to do focus work, and the whole space has some like chill beachside energy that makes you feel inspired. It's artistic in a way that makes you want to build things. I'm curious, do you prefer a corporate style building or do you prefer like more creative, flexible spaces? Let me know in comments. One of the themes that you're gonna be seeing in this vlog is AI. Yes, AI is everywhere. And honestly, it's a huge part of both my personal and professional workflow. I use Gemini almost daily from writing code to drafting documents and brainstorming and project ideas and whatnot, you name it. In addition to using Gemini in my day-to-day -day work, day life, I'm also like testing and launching new AI features that are embedded directly into core Google products like Google Ads. In the last video, you all told me that you also talk when you type. And so I'm not the only weird one. There are a lot of other people out there who talk when they type. So thank you for sharing that because that makes me feel like a little less awkward. And so I guess we all talk when we type. There's nothing weird about it. It's kind of normal. Anyway, so today my plan is that I'm going to, um, I'm going to be working in the morning. So my first half of my day, I'm going to be working at the Google LA office. I'm in, currently in the Venus office and I'm taking half day off and then I'm going to go um, attend like some tech week events and explore LA. So instead of taking the full day off, I needed to finish some work, so I decided to work half day, come to the office, and then explore the city. So, so today I spent most of my morning working on a proposal for a new AI experiment that helps advertiser generate ad copies using AI. Typically, I don't get involved in every experiment, but when it's something brand new like this that has never been done before, it requires a lot more critical thinking. So they pull in people like me where my primary focus is creating a plan that avoids any fallouts. Basically thinking through everything that could go wrong before we even start. So today I'm just writing the proposal and basically identifying all the fallouts that we could have in this experiment. And once the proposal is approved, I'll work with some of the junior team members to execute it. This is going to be a super small scale experiment compared to some of the other experiments that we do. But let's say if this is successful, it's going to be a huge milestone for our team because this is a big priority. Speaking of big milestones, one of the most exciting shifts in AI right now is multimodality. Models that can understand text, visual, audio, everything together. It's a huge step change in how we build products and honestly, how we create content too. There are tons of multi-models out there, 
And one that I've been testing is Freepik, who is also sponsoring this portion of the video. What I really like about Freepik is that it's model agnostic, which means they're not tied to a single model and they can bring all these multi-model capabilities into one creative suite. Let me show you a quick example with this demo. Here, I'm gonna ask the image generator to create a minimal LA skyline during sunset. And it gives me multiple variations instantly I can use as B-roll footage in this video. It's super fast and it lets you go from an idea to finish visual in second. You can try Freepix AI tools using the link in description below. And now let's talk about three mistakes you can run into when running A-B test experiments. And now you must be wondering what are some of those fallouts? Okay, whether you are a data scientist, data analyst, software engineers, anytime you're launching or testing a new feature or experiment, these are the three things that should always, always watch out for. Okay, are you ready for the class? Let's go. The first one is the novelty effect. Novelty effect basically means early results can look great just because it's new, not because it's better. For example, if it's like a new AI feature, like people will be really excited to use it, but eventually the excitement goes away and the usage also drops. So definitely something to keep in mind when like testing new features. The second one is sampling bias. This one you might already know, but let's say if your experiment data doesn't represent the real users that actually will be using this feature, your insights are going to be off. So you have to do like your due diligence to make sure that the sample size and the people, the users that you have in the sample are representative of the actual users. And my last one is overfitting to short-term metrics. Okay, this one has gotten so much importance and so much limelight in the last few years. Basically, a lot of experiments now focus on LTV metrics. And so basically what this means is that sometimes short-term performance might look great, but the long-term performance doesn't sustain. It's somewhat connected to the novelty effect, but it's slightly different. Okay, think about it this way. Let's say you launch a new feature and it helps you generate revenue in the first month but in 12 months, it doesn't do anything for you or it's net negative. In that case, we're basically overfitting our experiment and our launches for uh, short-term metrics. So you need to have a balance of short-term and long-term metrics when launching new features. One last thing, and my bonus thing, especially when you're testing AI features, there is an extra layer of complexity. You have to watch for things like model bias, quality drift and feedback loops, you are not just testing what users see, you are also testing how the model thinks. That's what makes AI experiment both challenging and exciting. And I'm curious, if you work in tech, have you been part of an AI or ML experiment? What was the biggest challenge for you? Let me know in comments. I'd love to hear what others in the field have to say. The class is ending now. I hope you learned something from this conversation. And let me know if I should do more of these like mini lessons in my future vlogs. And if you have any requests for any like mini learning educational session. Um, yeah, anyway, let me know. So around 1 p.m. I had wrapped up my work and left the office. I was actually taking half day off to attend LA Tech Week. I could have taken the full day off, but I had some important project timelines I did not want to fall behind on. And honestly, that's the reality. When I take time off, and in general, when you take time off in tech, you still end up doing the same amount of work just in like compressed few hours, which means if I had taken the day off today, I would still have to do the same amount of work, probably condense into tomorrow and rest of the week. So rest of the week would have been packed for me. I mean, I don't know anyone else relate to this. You take time off, but end up paying for it the next day with double the workload. Let me know in comments. After wrapping up at the office, I realized I had completely forgot about lunch because I was so heads down on finishing work before heading to this LA Tech Week events. Luckily, the first Tech Week event I attended had food. So I grabbed a plate and ate alone in peace because networking isn't always my strong suite. I'm good at it, but I just need my me time before I actually can go and mingle with people. The first event I attended was hosted by Live Nation and focused on creator economy and AI. These are the two words that I'm deeply connected to both as a techie as well as a creator. And from this event specifically, what stood out to me is that how many startups there are, they're like building AI products for creators, which is awesome. It's wild to think that just a few years ago, being a creator wasn't taken seriously and now it's respected industry that's driving real innovation. And I'm part of it, like it feels great. So I am done with work and I also finished the tech week. I attended a few events. 
and then I had some time, so I decided to like be a tourist, and I'm currently at a Rodeo Drive, and just gonna go walk around, go through the shops, and yeah, just enjoy the sun because Seattle is freezing right now. So I'm really happy that I get to escape winter for a little bit, even if it's just for work. All right, let me take you around with me. Okay, this is this is the smoothie that I ended up getting. It's the post workout smoothie. And I'm gonna try it and tell you if it was worth eighteen dollars. It is honestly too sweet for me. It's actually good, but I don't think it's worth eighteen dollars. After the Live Nation session, I stopped by one more LA Tech Week event. And honestly, there were so many events going on that it was so hard to choose. I wanted to attend three events to like make up for the day off, but I ended up skipping it, the third event, because I wasn't prepared for the LA traffic. That really threw me off. And honestly, moments like this make me really appreciate living in Seattle. It's calmer, fewer honks, and way less time spent in traffic. So instead of pushing myself, I decided to call it a night, grab food from this tiny hole-in-the-wall rice and chicken spot, and watch the sunset on my drive back home. The sunsets over LA felt like a small reminder that it's okay to slow down even when the calendar says otherwise. It was the perfect quiet ending that I needed to a full day of part work, part learning, and part exploring. Let me know your thoughts and comments. What part of my day resonated with you the most? And should I do more of these day in life vlogs? Let me know in comments. I hope you're having a beautiful day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.